Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed the last video that I uploaded on an in-depth review of the Top Guns A Supercharger Kit. If you haven't seen that video already, see the link here in the top right corner. As I said, I did a complete in-depth review of this kit, which I've been running for a few months now, and I've been absolutely in love with it. And if you watch the video all the way through, you of course saw that I teased that Top Guns is releasing yet another revision to his Supercharger Kit. That's right, the Supercharger Kit from Top Guns is getting even better. So in this video, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about the details that we know about this kit so far. But before we get into the main part of today's video, guys, I actually need your help. You see, over the past few months, as I've been working with Eugene to get my car all tuned up, it's come to my attention that there is a serious issue in the tuning community, especially related to ethics. What I found is that a lot of tuners are disabling safety features on the cars without telling their customers in order to make big power. And this is resulting in a lot of bad consequences such as blown motors. And then the tuners are simply saying that, oh, you didn't do your maintenance. I'm trying to blow up this issue in one of my upcoming videos. So where I need your guys' help is in collecting data logs. If you happen to have a car with a blown motor and you have data logs from before the incident occurred, or you happen to know a friend of yours that has a blown motor, please reach out to me on Instagram at the Horizon. I'm trying to collect data logs to try and show this problem in one of my upcoming videos. So let's talk about the new Top Guns Rotorex C38R Supercharger Kit. This is a supercharger kit that he announced was coming to the market back on February 25th in the 370Z forum. He actually announced it as I was in the middle of doing the review kit for his Ace Supercharger Kit. And I'm a little bit sour that I was reviewing a product that is now obsolete as he's getting ready to release the next revision. Um, this kit has only been out for like a year and a few months now. Um, but this new Rotorex kit that he is bringing to the market has a lot more promising benefits to it than his old revision of the Ace Kit that I'm currently running. To give you guys a little bit of background on Top Gun's kits from past to present, the original supercharger kit that he released was essentially an air-to-air -air conversion of the Stillen kit that also integrated the nine pound pulley. And this meant that we could make more boost than the original Stillen kit, as well as the air-to-air -air conversion, giving us more power potential as well. It was fairly revolutionary for this platform. It was a really big deal. It was also the lowest cost supercharger kit on the market, made more power than the original Stillen kit did and was cheaper. So it was already amazing from the start. Back in November of 2019, he then announced the ACE kit. That's the kit that I'm currently running on my car. This kit integrated the factory manifold. The factory manifold is a big deal because it cut down on the installation time and also meant that we had cooler intake temperatures due to the fact that we weren't getting all the heat soak from the Stillen manifold. I believe the stock manifold also flows a little bit better than the Stillen one does. Um, so that was just kind of another added benefit. Um, he also integrated a slightly larger intercooler as well. So big props there. We also get even further cooling capacity from that kit. Um, so yeah, the ACE kit has been fantastic. We've seen guys making right around anywhere from about five to 600 horsepower on 93 octane and six to 700 horsepower in the E85 range. So this kit has been absolutely fantastic. There were still some improvements that he wanted to make on his supercharger kit, however, and then finally a month ago on the 370Z forums, he announced the new Rotorex kit. So what are the biggest differences that we're gonna be seeing from this kit? Well, first and foremost, Top Guns is stepping away from the Vortec V3 SI unit, and we are now gonna be using the Rotorex C38R supercharger. This new supercharger unit has a lot of added benefits over the Vortec V3 SI. Um, it does spin up a lot faster, up till 90,000 RPM, whereas the Vortec unit only did about 52,000. So faster impeller speeds, of course, means more boost. Up into like 33 PSI or so is kind of what I had calculated whereas the supercharger kit from Vortec was only capable of right around 22 PSI. Are you actually gonna be making that much boost? Probably not, and I highly wouldn't recommend running 33 PSI on a stock VQ motor anyways. Um, but yeah, you can potentially make more power from this unit. Hopefully we'll be seeing a little bit more boost lower in the RPM range. It is still gonna have a linear boost curve. So that's also an added benefit. Um, the fact that it uses helical gears rather than the traditional gear layout from the Vortec unit does mean it is a lot quieter. The Vortec V3 has a very distinct gear backlash noise. You can tell that it's a Vortec V3 under the hood. 
but this new C38R unit should hopefully be a little bit quieter, which is something that I'm really looking forward to. Other added benefits include less maintenance. With the Vortec unit, you are expected to do oil changes about as frequently as you do oil changes for your motor. So basically every time you're doing an oil change for your engine, you're also expected to change the oil in the Vortec unit. Um, with the Rotorex unit, you only need to change oil up to every 50,000 miles. Um, should you actually go that long between oil changes? Probably not. You should probably change it more frequently. Um, but it's nice to know that you can go longer on an oil change with the Rotorex unit. Um, one concern I do have, however, is that Rotorex does state that in order to moderate the temperature properly for the supercharger unit, you're expected to run an oil cooler specifically for the supercharger. Um, so that could be a little bit annoying to try and integrate, especially if you've already got an oil cooler in front of your radiator and condenser. Um, so I just don't know how that's going to fit. I don't know what Top Gun's plan is. We really haven't gotten a lot of photos yet, um, but I'm anxious to see what's going to happen there. Other added benefits for this kit outside of just the supercharger, um, Top Guns is supposedly making it easier for us to integrate in-cabin boost control. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a while now. Um, with my supercharger kit, I don't necessarily want to be able to run high boost all the time. I really want to be able to maintain my motor, and as such, I'd like to be able to set how much boost I'm actually running on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, if I'm just cruising around and I want to put my foot down a little bit, I don't necessarily want to be making 15 PSI all the time. If I'm just out for a leisurely cruise, I might want to be able to limit that a little bit. And then if I'm trying to make peak power, it'd be nice to be able to increase that boost up to whatever level I'm feeling comfortable with. So the fact that he's making it easier for us to integrate boost control is nice to see. You could already run boost control on his ACE kit if you wanted to, but that's not something that was standard. You'd had to modify the kit for that. Um, so it's nice to hear that he is supposedly adding an option to integrate boost control a little bit easier. Um, I don't know how exactly he's going to go about doing that. Not a lot of details have been released yet, but it's nice to hear that he's thinking about boost control as an added option for us. Other added benefits of this kit include the ability to run a proper conical filter. With the ACE kit, you are basically forced to run a turbo guard with some sock filters on top of it to be able to fit in between the supercharger and your radiator core support. But with the Rotorex kit, he's trying to line it up with the factory intake hole so that you could actually run a straight through pipe and then run a proper k and style conical filter behind the bumper. This is something I'm really looking forward to because I want to be able to have that factory filtration capability without losing boost potential. So it's nice to see that he is allowing us to do that now. Um, and then he's also adding the option to run your MAFs in front of the supercharger, um, as well as BOV recirculation and PCV ingestion. This is all geared towards being able to make this kit smog legal. Um, I've actually asked him if he plans to get it smog tested so that people in California can run it legally. He does have intention to do that. I don't anticipate that it'll get finished by the time that he releases his kit, which is supposed to be in like a month or so. It would be amazing to see him get this kit smog tested because that would mean that he's basically beating out the market for the Stillen kit. Because I believe right now Stillen is the only smog legal supercharger kit that is out there. Um, so it'd be nice to see him get it smog tested. So yeah, that pretty much covers the majority of the key differences on this kit. Um, there's still a lot of uncertainties here. He hasn't given us a lot of details yet because he's still in the R&D phase here. Um, I believe he is going to be getting it on the dyno for the first time on Wednesday of this coming week. Um, and once he's finally got the dyno results and the kit's looking solid, I believe he's going to release it for pre-orders. Um, so that should be sometime here in the next week or so um, with the first kit supposedly shipping out in April. At least that was the last communication that I got from him. For anybody that is planning on upgrading from the ACE kit, I do believe he has a buyback program that he's planning on putting in place where he's going to buy back any of the parts that aren't going to be used on the new kit, and then he's going to send you all of the updated components. Um, I don't think that's really been finalized yet, and I don't know what the pricing is expected to be, um, but it's nice to see that it's giving us an option to be able to upgrade. So I'll share with you guys again all of the photos that we have so far from Aaron on this new kit. Um, I wish we had some more information, um, but we will be getting some more info as this kit gets finalized and then finally when he uploads it on his site. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited for it. In terms of if I will be upgrading to his new kit, I have talked with Aaron and he is eager to get me upgraded. So we have already been talking a little bit and we are planning on shipping out the components that I need to be able to swap over. Um, so I don't know when that will happen. As I said, we still need to see how this kit performs. Um, we need to see how much power it makes, make sure it's actually running soundly. Um, and then he's hoping to begin shipping out in April. So maybe sometime in May, we can see me getting this kit upgraded and then we can see how the new kit performs. Um, I'm anxious to see if it makes any more power. That's partly gonna come down to the tune, of course. But yeah, I'm really excited to see how this kit does. 
And that's about gonna wrap it up for this video. I really wish I had more details to share on this kit, but it is hot off the press right now. So we don't really have all the details yet. Um, hopefully we'll be seeing pre-orders get taken here in the next few weeks. I'm really anxious to see how it performs compared to the ACE kit. I'm anxious to get it on my car and review it and see just how it does. Um, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below to the forum post that Aaron had started. You can take a look there for updates in real time on how this kit gets on. Um, really anxious to get into my car. Um, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned to see me install the new Rotorex C38R kit, and I'll see you all in the next video. Later.